Welcome to our YouTube channel, where advanced souls and spiritual seekers get inspired. I'd like to talk today about the science and art of prioritizing. This is a most, uh, I would say, recent uh, requested topic that I can share you today. And this is important because this is the immediate uh, need for the year. And as we start the year, we need to plan ahead wisely and also deliberately and also realign our lives so that our end game would be more meaningful and productive than last year. So when I talk about prioritizing, it's in terms of your perceived vision, mission and uh, plan. So every vision, mission and plan needs time needs the ability to juggle which are very important and urgent things and also it is about the method by which you allocate time versus your goal and marry them together the question is the perception of what is important and urgent uh, is always about the quality of life we we leave so the life of the eight types of people needs to be studied so that you would know how to, I would say, merge and blend your priority, not only for yourself, but for others. Because at the end of the day, it is how you match and merge your own priorities with people who live with you and your team and your clients and, and so with your families. So if you were planning only your own life for yourself without considering other people, then it's so easy. You can be lazy, you can be complacent, you can be uh, procrastinating, but uh, it's just responsibility to yourself. But when you are responsible uh, to a company, to a family, to your friends, to your social contribution uh, commitments, then it becomes more complicated. So let's first talk about the, uh, the eight types of uh, people's per perception, how they perceive what, what are priorities and what are not. So the type one, for example, is like the, the people with the willpower who are always in a hurry and so on. Their priority from you uh, is like from yesterday. They want it yesterday, not now. They're always in a hurry and they demand and will that the target and the timeline should be now or yesterday. And so those people are always uh, rush, rush, rush and difficult to work with if you are not uh, able to, to urgently do things. So those are the type uh, one kind of people. The type two are slower, like the Mother Teresa. They take time, they think that God gives everyone a chance to recover and to transform. So they think that you have infinity for you to, to develop yourself. So they tend to procrastinate and delay, and they want to live in the moment only, and thinking that the moment is more important than tomorrow or the next year. So they tend to have an excuse also of delaying things and making it slower. So the type one and type two tend to collide in terms of their time uh, perception. The George Bush married with the mother Teresa would clash in terms of even going for the supermarket. The speed by which George Bush won things is faster and expected to be done quickly, whereas the mother Teresa tends to make it slower with greeting everyone and allowing people to overtake them in the cash register and so on. So I would say that uh, the perception between the two would vary and that's where a lot of contrast and conflict uh, result in terms of perception. Now the type three are more the entrepreneurs and businessmen. Their time uh, prioritizing, uh, I would say, essence is about their clients, their investments, the ability to meet what their clients need. So, so they always float where the money goes. And so it's all about the income generation schemes that they're lo looking after, the, where the money is, the time goes. So their priorities are not always uh, in terms of family or spirituality or anything. The, their priority goes into the financial and entrepreneurial schemes of things. So it's anything goes with their time as long as uh, it's in, into the 
revenue making schemes. So, but still, they are very strict with time because they have so much meeting after meeting. So their time every hour is calibrated in a way that is full of so-called productive meetings or doesn't, sometimes it's not productive, but it's just about uh, making sure the client's uh, needs are met so they can earn that much money and retain the clients forever or so on. So that's, that's also like a, a, like a spider web weaving and weaving. And at the end, they will be suffocated by their own priorities, which is more than their ability to handle uh, those priorities. Now the time for are more the entertainers. So their time is not always calibrated. So it's anything goes and they usually do not uh, follow exactly the time management schedules and they get delayed or they're late or they overslept or they have mood swings so they cannot go to the schedules and so on. So the type four are the more difficult personalities to manage time with. So if they would say yes, it, they don't really mean yes all the time. They will cancel the next hour and the next hour they will say, oh, let's you know, proceed and so on. So uh, the, the type four are more difficult in time management and prioritizing aspects. The type five are like the scientists, the Einstein, they are in, engrossed in their discoveries and research. So they're very also continuous time management as they are in the process of research. They do not stop until they, they find what they're looking for. So there can be a continuous uh, time deployment and their priorities are like a single pointed uh, uh, scheduling and focusing. So it's a little bit different from the type four that are more entertainers and they are, anything goes. And uh, type five are more specific and objective of their time expenditure and they know what they want to do. And so they're very systematic and, method uh, uh, and uh, methodical in terms of uh, expenditure of time and following priorities. The type six are more the mystics, the soldiers, the militant type of personalities where they just continuously support their ideals until they get them. So they don't have to sleep or they can be continuous in, and uh, following of orders of their superiors, if be it God, an avatar, a prophet, or their generals, if they were soldiers. So they can be focused a lot on their ideals and time is not measured according to seconds or hours. It's about the time to accomplish their mission. So that's like where they focus a lot. And the type seven are more regimented, ritualistic and ceremonial. And they are the most strict in terms of time management because you can predict their time to go to the toilet, the time for uh, snacks, the time to go to shopping. You can predict their rhythm because they are very ritualistic in nature. So their time management is the most strict, more regimented, more scheduled and predictable. Their ability to prioritize also amazing because they put uh, every hour in terms of goals and accomplished uh, tasks and so on. So uh, they are the most, uh, I would say, strict in terms of time management and organized prioritizing uh, strategies. So if you mix a lot of these uh, seven types of personalities, they will collide in terms of their perception of what is uh, the most important priorities and when to do them and so on. Because their personality differences, they would measure time differently from each other and their prioritizing aspects will be also different. Now the type eight would be a combination of at least three of them kind. Like uh, the more advanced ones, for example, can be a combined uh, entrepreneur and technology expert and they have a uh, uh, bureaucratic uh, job to institute things. So the type seven are more bureaucrats. They work every day in a certain schedule, office, home, office, home, and something more ritualistic. So the eight types can be adaptable. They can be more advanced because they can flow to different kinds of, of prioritizing aspect because they are, say, the boss of the boss. They can manage to flow with whatever is needed by the client, by the staff, by their own personal needs and so on. So the more advanced are the type eight. Now, so you can see that 
when you speak of prioritizing or juggling priorities, it's more complicated than usual. It's complicated when, than, than putting a, a date, a schedule, when to start, when to end, and, and many other aspects of the time management in a, a uh, I would say, a workbook or a, a computerized time sheet and so on. So those are just more of your task orientation. But when you start to say juggling priorities of bigger goals and bigger schemes of things, it's more complicated than managing the task of the hour or the day. So, so that is one uh, consideration you need to, to think about. What type of personality are you? And what type of personality are you delivering those goods and promises so that you will harmonize the expectations of both parties? the one giving and the one receiving, or the one who is promoting the meeting and the one who is coming to the meeting. So these are all to be considered when you start to think of bigger, uh, I would say, harmonizing aspects of time management and prioritizing aspect. Now, another thing that uh, we need to consider is the type of substance and energy used, the trinity of substance or the trinity of time perception. So the people with willpower are always in high speed, velocity, and demanding in terms of what they need. They need it now, they need it yesterday, and you are forced to deliver when they said, I need it now, by hook or by crook. So they're very much on that kind of timeline, speed, velocity, and rush. And uh, type two are the more loving kinds, like the Mother Teresa. They need more time to do things. They need to consider everyone's opinion. They need to to do all the consensus checking. So they take more time because they tend to have, uh, to be more the magnet point of decision so that everyone is happy and they tend to please people. And so it takes time to please everyone. The type one, they don't really care if you're hurt or if you care or if you do not care as long as what they need is what you deliver. Their time is their time. Now, the type three, uh, the, the, the other part of the trinity of the will, the love, and the mind, or the intellect aspect, is people with more organized thinking, the people more strategic thinking, the people more concrete and tactical in nature. So they, they can design their time expenditure accordingly by procedural uh, references, by uh, anything that drives their, their priorities are calibrated. They are better in time management than the other two. They are masters of scheduling, meeting, agenda, development, goal setting, and all kinds of things. So by looking at the energy expenditure and uh, where people are coming from, whether it's from force and will with speed, velocity, demand, or from preservation, preservation people like the Mother Teresa, they tend to preserve the moment, they tend to enjoy the moment, so they are more focused on now than the future or the next steps. Whereas the type of uh, more mental people, they have a more organized expectations of every hour, every day, every one, week and every month, because they are paying loans, they are paying salaries, they're also being paid by the clients which are time bound uh, goals and deliveries. So they are respectful of time because everything is about money and time are equi you know, are e equivalently uh, factored together. The type love uh, energy, like the Mother Teresa, do not equate time with money. They equate time with loved ones as more of important factors, more than money. That's why they, they want to spend more time with their loved ones and with people. Because to them, that is the value they added to their lives by being with people, by talking to them, by listening to them. And so on. So the lawyer's time, the, th the type of intellect that you pay per hour, is more strict because they think the value of their time is equal to money. And their value added to others is their coaching, their mentoring, their consulting, which is per hour or per week or per day and so on. So they, they are more strict with time expenditure and their priorities are very much predictable and already written. So they know really their demand versus supply of uh, time and, and expenditure of, uh, of money and, and priorities. The type one, sometimes they plan faster, they deliver faster, they execute faster, but sometimes unreasonable. 
in the sense that they are, their perception about how to do things are faster and more powerful than the other people who t tend to calibrate their priorities and put their milestones in order. So these are again the determinants why people collide and have conflict with, between their priorities and time management. Uh, another thing is more of the development. When people are more developed, they usually not only use the science of prioritizing and time management, they also have the art of time management and prioritizing. So what's the difference? When you say science of time management, then you are very calibrated in putting what day would you do the agenda and the goal and when do you deliver the goods, when do you collect the money and when you pay the interests and so on. So it's very sequential and more or less uh, forecasted uh, sequences. So they, they are more uh, in terms of uh, a method, a sequence and measurable uh, items. So that is like the science of prioritizing. So you prioritize because there's a sequence by which you deliver the priority because there's a co consequence and reward for each step on the way. If you're late, they might sue you for de delivering on time the bid or the promised delivery. When you're um, too early, also you spend more money in producing things that are not needed. So they, they are very strict in the method of delivering priorities because of the equation of time. Priorities are in terms of money and payments and disbursement and interest rates and so on. So the science of time management are their territory. The type one do not use the science, but force of time management. The, the loving types do not use the science and art. They just like, uh, they forgot the time. They're in timeless uh, sense because of their feeling. They would judge the whole thing by their feeling, how they feel about the situations, how they feel about delivering or not delivering. Well, how do you feel about saying goodbye to others or saying goodbye three times from the consulting room to the door to the to the car to the phone they're still saying goodbye and how are you did you arrive well the type one once they say goodbye they think that okay they will call you when they need to or they don't have to follow up what happened to you at the end the type three they tend to say goodbye and then even text you and more of selling another thing to you because they want to sell you another thing they will text you again and or send you a business card greetings and so on so you see that uh, the science is more the method of putting sequences according to seconds minutes hours weeks months and years in terms of science you know what is expected now with the terms of art you flow with the demand by your sense, by your instincts, by your intuition, by your sense of flow. So you need to be very flowing to be able to have a science of prioritizing, the sense of time management, where your instincts will bring you to do the right thing at the right time. So you have to evolve in terms of your gut instincts, your gut sense, and your intuitional faculty to be able to sense the right thing to do in the right moment. So, and for me, I use both. For very type three, type five, type seven deliveries, like people like Einstein, uh, Bill Gates, people who are very ritualistic and expected results at a certain time. I, I also exercise the science of time management and prioritizing by sequential, time bound, very specific uh, deliveries. Like when I coach people, there's exact time that I need to appear and disappear from the screen, from the online Skype calls. And I need to follow it because there's another patient waiting for me the next few minutes from the first client to the second to the third and so on. And after that, there's a meeting that is waiting for me to, to run and so on. So you need to be methodical and systematic in terms of those kind of jobs. And in terms of uh, the speechful side, I'm more flowing and more artistic in delivering uh, promises to people because sometimes the lecture increases in numbers of uh, downloads while I'm talking the beings need to add certain things to the souls of the students who are listening so I need to add more time extra time to finish the downloads and the blessings and so on 
So you cannot just stop it because, oh, it's like uh, two hours already. Uh, sometimes you need to extend another 10 minutes for the sake of finishing the downloads of energy and the inspiration has to be consumed. So you need the science of sensing what to do and when to do it and how to end it in the right way rather than too strict, uh, not a Swiss time. It's more of the art of consuming what you need to do because they are more important things than just being on time. Sometimes to finish your job as a spiritual teacher, there's a certain timelines here that is different from the timelines up. Here's about the substance delivery, the inspiration delivery, the inspiration of the wisdom to be, uh, to be uh, uh, given to the listeners. Here is about measuring of sequence and of seconds, minutes, and hours. And sometimes they do not have the same measurement. So you need to be able to channel properly, intuitively, instinctively, the substance when you deliver a more advanced substance from, up, from above to transform the situation or the lecture or the event. You need to bring the substance and let it consume the time needed rather than time guiding its consumption. So that's the science and that's the art aspect to it or the esoteric part of it. Another thing is, if you are very active, your navel, your base, your heart, your ashna, all these centers, the center of mind, abstract, the center of heart, the flow of emotion and love, the center of instincts using energy and gut sense, and the sense of, uh, I would say, delivery and fulfillment through effort, the base center. These are all but energetic sensors, sensors of the mind, of the ideas being given out, the sense of the emotions of how to connect to the crowd or to connect to situations, the sense of instincts using your, your guts, your sense of knowing what to do, when to do it, and the sense of execution by physicalizing the practical aspect, the base center, and of course the sense of intuition, the crown, where if you're channeling an information, then let it flow to you rather than you editing and mentalizing the time, you need to flow. That's a very mental people and objective people. They do not develop intuition and channeling uh, faculty easily because they are so in control about what they want to do that the higher force which needs to do its own job that is not calibrated by time only or neither your reasoning uh, cannot execute. So you have to balance both the subjective way of managing time and priorities and the objective ways of sequencing priorities and delivering your goods and services. So you need to juggle those two kinds of uh, uh, management of time, priorities, and, and delivery and fulfillment aspect of your services. And also, when you have planned uh, properly with the right timing, and the uh, computation, once they are very exacting and very, uh, I would say, realistic, the ability to flow is also easier. So, so sometimes you need first to master the science of prioritizing and time management before you can develop the art of prioritizing and time management. Because the art has to be mastered after you have mastered the sequencing aspect, methodical, and uh, the objective aspect of time management. If you develop the, the art and instinctive aspect before you're methodical, uh, you can only relate to people who are like you, who will flow with you. But when you deliver to the Bill Gates type, the Einstein type, they will complain because you will extend more your meeting. Your, 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 your timelines will stretch or compress depending on how you feel, how you sense more than what is promised to, to people in a meeting or in a certain kind of project. So you need to apply many methods uh, of delivery and prioritizing for the eight types of human beings or human, uh, eight types of corporations or organizations who are expecting differently, uh, different deliverables and fulfillment of services and goods and so on. So, so there are three things that we've been talking about. The eight types of human beings and their ways of perceiving time, time priorities and deliverables. Uh, they have different 
perception of what is urgent, what is important, and so on. Therefore, there's a certain kind of uh, difference in consensus about priorities and for time management's sake, uh, the measurement. Another one is the Trinity, where there's people with power, speed, velocity, demand, and there's people who are preserving nature, the preservation task, like more love type and more mystical people. They want to like, stay put and preserve and relate and so on. And there's one of the very calibrated time managers prioritizing uh, executives and so on who are very much on the regiments and procedural things and protocols and money equals time and so on. So this has a different method. So the Trinity has to be perceived, whom are you dealing with? The George Bush, the Bill Gates, or Einstein, or the Mother Teresa? So when you start, and who are you to deliver things? Are you the type two, Mother Teresa, or type three, the Bill Gates type, or George Bush type? So by harmonizing the expectations of priorities, goals, and timelines, you'll be able to uh, use whether it's an art you're using with Mother Teresa because you flow with her and her expectations, or you are regimented in terms of what you promised to Bill Gates, or you just follow the demand of the George Bush by creating more speedy teams that will deliver things when they need them. So even your building of teams and your, your groups uh, in the business sense and your project sense has to be really designed accordingly to your client's demand or to your project demand or to any priority you have created for yourself. So those are the, the three aspects. Now, another component to the science and art of prioritizing is also your have, be, do strategy. In the short term, you can predict what you will want to achieve because it's a short term. So if I do this, this is the result. If I sell this one now, I gain this one. So that's like a short term uh, prioritizing aspect. If I study my lessons now, I tend to have a high grade, something like that. So, or if I eat well, I will have a better digestion. If I eat first the fruits like papaya, pineapple before I eat the heavy meal. So you already know the predictable sequence. So it's a short term uh, forecast. So you can do the to do before to be or to have. In terms of medium range, like a year, or two years, or three to five years, uh, you tend to be able to guess, guesstimate, or have an educated guess on what you can potentially become and achieve in those years. And so you start on what you want to become as a brand, as a result, as an outcome, as an end game, so that you will know what to do. So you start with your mission and your goals and your expectations, and then you, your output for two years or so, and then you solve back what are the sequences to deliver what you want to become or what you want to achieve here. So it's still predictable because it's not a long range goal. It's two years something. It's easy to see ahead. So you would use your logic, your common sense, your track record, your way of best practices that you deliver the same thing. If they are the same uh, goals and almost just improve 30% your output, then you can predict that if you exert more effort, you will have the same, and you will have the 30% output increase. So those are linear. So when you're doing forecasting for linear output and linear time, predictable, uh, time, noble time, more givens than, than uh, unknowns, then you, you can have, again, the same, that this is what I do, and this is what I will become, and this is what I will achieve, and something like that. But for long, long haul or long term goals that are not easy to predict and forecast already, there's more unknown, there's more uncertainties, there's a lot of risk involved, there's complexity with people who will affect your priorities and goals delivery, and so on. So you have to start to go for the vision instead of the mission first. This is my vision, this is my end game for five years or 10 years, and this is my mission to make it work. So this is what I want to achieve and have, 
at the end of five years or 10 years if it's long, long term. And this one I want to become. And this is what I want to do based on that. So for this kind of long term goal, I would rather start with have, then be, and then to do. So the to do is the last things to list down because you have first to know your vision, what you want to have at the end. And then you want to know your mission, what you want to become. And then out of that, you can decide what to do in a few years or a few, one year or so on and so on. So in a long range, the more advanced human being who can forecast and envision their future potential would start with a vision in mind, what I want to have at the end as like the North Star. And then out of the North Star, the purpose by which you want to have that, you want to achieve something and you want to become somebody or become the first in your industry or something like that. So have, become or be. And then out of that, you, you develop the two lists, tactical and strategic, to develop your game plan. So your game plan is achieved out of your becoming and having, because that is now to do. To do this, to do that, and to do this way, and to invest in this way, to achieve in this goal. This is goal one, goal two, phase one, phase two, phase three, stage one, stage two, stage three. And then you break down the bigger mission into fractions or smaller segments, and they're easy to do. See, when you have a big mission, all you have to do is break them down into segments on sequences, procedures, or smaller goals, and then they can be distributed to different teams who will look at it as just a project. You are seeing the scheme of things, whereas every department is seeing their own departmental goals, so it's easy for them. Even a small mind can, can do things when they are fragmented into smaller pieces of work and, and jobs and projects. And then out of that, you will be the one assembling all the department's output into a scheme project or a bigger uh, goal. And then this one goal is one goal of the many goals that you will bring forward to achieve a mission in stage one, stage two, three, T, and so on. And out of this, when you deliver all these stages and projects and missions, you have become something, somebody. You have achieved something. You have received an accolade or a prize, a reward for it, and or remuneration for your effort and prize and rewards. And then this is the one that points towards the achievement of the vision. And the vision can be also maturing and evolving and organically expanding. So your vision also expands as the mission is accomplished. It's not fixed. Well, there's a fixed vision at first, and then you find out that as you get more enlightened, the vision expands because that is the reward of initiation or expansion of consciousness when you have self-realized and you have achieved that self-realization to an actualized result, the beings, the giver of the divine plan or the giver inspirations and uh, projects from the heavens will give you another bigger vision that is bigger than before because you are more enlightened, you're wiser, you're bigger in terms of energy, therefore you cannot do the same job in a small way. You will be promoted to do bigger things according to your development and your initiation requirement to have another thesis to evolve to the next level in your next initiation. So again, you see that your sense of arranging your procedures, protocols will not be the same anymore. You're starting to evolve again into more an artist's uh, developing an artistic way and creative way of developing your priorities and your goals until you settle them again. And then you start to institutionalize again your projects because you have created, then you can innovate, you can improve until it matures, until it becomes an end game, which you don't, we will use, which you will use for a springboard to another end game. So the vision expand. So uh, I would say that when you are more evolved, your ability to combine the science and art of prioritizing methodically and artistically and creatively will always be developed and honed with you because you demand it 
for your own projects that requires methods of prioritizing and then art of prioritizing. So again, the fourth factor is how evolved are you to have more intelligence or develop intelligence from instincts to emotional intelligence to concrete mental to abstract mental and to intuitional and wisdom intelligence and to the will intelligence so that whatever you physicalize are a result of the right decisions. So in summary, you need to get your best bet on what is your main task, your foreground task and background task. And everything you do is, is not like only for business and for clients. And that's the common mistakes of people who are so-called experts in prioritizing and juggling their goals and priorities because they only focus on the management of business. Uh, the last message I want to include is the five key areas of life where you need to juggle your priorities and manage your time and goals. So you have to have a prioritizing aspect of your family time and life. You have your career and work and business or your financial time. And you have also your social life and your environmental contribution time. You have also your health time, managing your health and improving it and also your spiritual time, the path of enlightenment and your character building and value formation. So you have five key areas of your life that you need to manage your priorities and put your agenda of time expenditure. So when you start to think in a more profound way, thinking of the five pillars of your life that you bundle into a life path, then you become a more sophisticated and a more and time alchemists, where you mix all things and bundle them together and the results are even bigger and more profound than the single successes that you get out of each prong of your life. So, well, for beginners, this is like a complicated thing to do. But if you were applying your time management and prioritizing strategies in your workplace, and you also add your family life to look at your family as an organization that needs uh, time management and time auditing of time wastage and time robbers, then you become efficient in your family management and prioritizing. Now bring that expertise in the workplace also to manage your agenda with respect to your social contribution, not only social life, but contribution to society. Then you can plan it ahead as if it were a, an agenda and a goal and, and an outcome that you need to measure. And then you have also your spiritual life. You need to speak, uh, measure your spiritual achievement, your performance, and measure your milestones spiritually. How enlightened are you every year, or every month, or every six months? So you need to put an agenda and a goal setting aspects of that, prioritizing your spiritual life and a curve for your path of enlightenment. Then you have also your health life prioritizing aspect, where you put your skills in managing your work and your clients time to your health time. When you're starting to put all of these and combine them into a game plan, they are all plans, health plan, spiritual plan, and so on. When you combine them to merge rather than to separate, and some of them might be able to have a blending point to, to become melted to each other's time. And, and that is your core, all time, uh, I would say, priorities. When they start to merge, those are your all-time priorities where you have all-time responsibility and on any time responsibility. The work can be your full-time in terms of that. Your other things can be part-time and so on. But there's a core where you blend everything to be an all-time you that's needed to be you managing that because that is you and that is the blending of your path. Everything are just attached. So... So I would say that we need to talk more together about systematizing the synchronized time management to bundle your life path into one path rather than separated. And also to also bring the parallel time management where you can delegate some of your jobs and roles and then assemble the results at the end called the parallel time management. When you are an expert on both, the synchronized time management and the parallel time management, you are a master of prioritizing and time management. You are the one that can manage bigger things. 
because your awareness of what to be done sequentially versus artistically and instinctively is so in tune to yourself because you're so aligned and balanced and have have developed the ascending levels of intelligence from instinct to intuition and wisdom you would be the next design of a human being that is uh, the ability to be multitasking in all layers, not only in one layer, horizontal layer of multitasking, but in ascending layers as well. So this is the requirement for the new advanced humanity. I'm just giving you a, uh, I would say, an, an orientation about what the future humanity would look like and the advanced humanity and the advanced saints and masses would be equipped to produce the maximum result that has not been imagined and fathomed by the current geniuses today and forecasters uh, of today's uh, think tanks because they have not used the facets and affairs that I'm talking about, the five levels of intelligence, the five keys of real life, the science and art of prioritizing and the trinity aspects and the eight types of human beings. So they do not have the calibration of the masterful looking at the architect of substance on construction, destruction and preservation component of divinity called God and macrocosm. So I hope you have been confused a little bit or being enlightened. Confusion and enlightenment can be in the same demarcation line. They're almost touching each other. So as you get confused, you're more enlightened. As you get enlightened, you are more confused again. It's a ladder of, uh, of confusion, sometimes delusion and illumination, and then, then you go to delusion, confusion, illumination. And that is called initiation process. And so I would like to welcome you into the search of the realities in terms of ascending intelligence and ascending development. So again, this channel is where advanced souls Special seekers get inspired. Welcome and subscribe for other topics. Namaskar.